How you doing? Very good, Martin. How's it going with you and the the new uh, project? We're going to see a new album. Yeah, it's going fantastic right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, can't be any really better. Although my team lost tonight, but okay, you know, things happen. <laughs> Grand Supreme Blood Court. Now uh, the album's coming out in November. Bow down okay. before the Blood Court. This album, yep. um, I've I've heard it, and I I think this is a uh, going back to classic roots of you know metal. This is great. What's your uh, vision behind this? Thanks. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, thing is that um, uh, when we started this, uh, it wasn't really. I mean, it was not. It was not. Uh, it wasn't really my idea. The thing is, uh, it was just because Eric Daniels. He's actually like an old friend of ours. Um, yeah, and he came to us like you know I want to do something again. You know, I just want to play music again, and you know, get all the ideas that I have, just like spew them out, and you know, make like some brutal metal again. And the only people that I know, and I really want to make that kind of music with, is you out of jam. So I never, I never knew really what to expect. I mean, I knew that Eric is like a great kind of rhythm guitar player with great ideas, but um, yeah, I could never imagine that you know we would make an album like this really. So uh, <laughs> I'm really happy with the end result too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure when you look at, you know, the production and, and listen to it now, you know, because I'm sure you've heard it uh, plenty of times already, the the production is, is great on it. Mm -hmm. You know, from the guitar sounds to everything, your voice. Oh, thank you very much. The boys will be very pleased to hear that. It's, uh, the thing is a little bit also that, um, because, you know, Eric was not the only, the, only, the only songwriter on it. I mean, because when we started, and then all of a sudden Alvin, who is a uh, current bass player in Asphyx, uh, he came up and says, you know what, I miss a bit like playing guitar because he used to be like a guitar player in his, in his uh, previous bands. So he says like, is it okay if I join you fellas? And then um, uh, we said, well, just give it a try. And then him and Eric, they teamed up a little bit to write the songs and they really had, um, you know, he really had something in mind what they wanted and they, they matched just all the ideas that they had together. And you know, I, I was even astonished by what, you know, what, <laughs> all the ideas that they had. So then Eric, uh, he's very, very, you know, picky when it comes to his sound. Uh, and he says, well, you know, I've heard some of your, you know, work with the Bullets and with Asphyx, and I really like what this Dan Swano guy does. So do you think he can, you know, give a kind of a tryout with, you know, when it comes to the sound? I said, yeah, you know, you can always uh, ask him that. It's not a problem. So then Dan worked a little bit on it, and together with Eric. And, uh, yeah, he was really, really a happy man. And, you know, then... Yeah, then I know that, you know, that that's that's for Eric like the most important part because he's like I said he's always very very difficult when it comes to his guitar sound. And he always has been like that in the past too. But that's only a good thing, you know. I mean that's why Asphyx in because you know it, it always sounded really heavy when it came to when it comes to his guitars. So there was no there was no doubt for me that that the sound of the guitars would be like very heavy. But uh, yeah, I could never expect that I you know came with songs like this. But um, yeah, I mean, they really did a lot of work when it when it comes to to you know developing the specific sound that they have. Let's say, Martin, what type of amps did you use to get this uh, tone? Uh, I think uh, Eric always sticks to his Marshall. Uh, I think kind of an older one, you know, still with the um, fuck, how you call these things in American? Uh, uh, yeah, like not 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 the modern kind of stuff, but more like the old style. You know, with the, still the lights in it and all that. The classic Marshall sound, yeah. which we're hearing in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah I think it's, that's, what he, that's what he tried to achieve, you know. I mean, it's the thing with him, too, that, that uh, uh, he's not very charmed by, by uh, sound that, that, you know, bands have nowadays. It's all a bit, uh, I hear many times it's, it's, it's all a bit too, uh, yeah, too digital, too compressed, too compact, too, too cold. And, um, uh, well... I think we all have that a little bit in in, in this band, that um, yeah, the, the, you know, we just have old roots and we really like like the old bands that we that you know that we listen to, and also because of the sound that they had back in those days. I don't know. I mean, it may sound that I'm an old guy or something, but <laughs> it's just how it is for me. <laughs> Let's say the songwriting in this, when you guys were presented the songs, or you know, when you guys all looked at the songs, how how much effort did you put in to get this stuff going? Well. Like I said, the thing is just that, that um, Alvin and, and Eric, they teamed up at Eric's place to, you know, to work everything out that they had on ideas. Because apparently, and that's what, we, what no one knew, uh, is that they, had, they, they, all had a, they both had like a shitload of riffs like just on the shelves. 
you know, in a, in, a, in a way of they were never able to use it anywhere. So they, yeah, they kind of played that. And then, uh, yeah, they discovered that everything matched really together. That they, you know, also as two guitar players, but also the ideas that they had, they just, because some, some, some things that we do are a little bit like melodic that you, you know, you will not find quickly with, um, well, as you say, Asphyx or something. And in the beginning, I remember like Bob, like, no, no, no melodies. I hate that. You know, but it's it's a kind of a, um, yeah, it gives this kind of a, you know, it's it, it's not just a melody, it's like a kind of a macabre atmosphere that it gives to it, like, you know, like an, like a little extra, and also that makes it different. So there was, um, uh, yeah, that was really like a pleasant surprise that the two, that Alwyn and, and, and Eric really found each other when it comes to, you know, two guitar players that all of a sudden really enjoy playing together and, 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 and match together, and, you know, in a way of like fuse in a band, really. So that's, you know, they they did the main part, like 50-50 when it comes to the riffs. And, uh, yeah, they, they, I mean, actually, when it comes purely musically, I had absolutely nothing to do with it. Because sometimes I do take part in arranging things, but um, with this one, no. They, all of a sudden, I just had everything on my plate. And I was like, okay, Martin, sort it out. You know, you you just um, sing on the parts that you like to sing on or what you think is a vocal part and, you know, write lyrics and, you know, do everything what's necessary, uh, uh, you know, to have like um, you know you finally your vocals on it, so um, I think that's that's a bit yeah that's um, all to say that all all there is to say to it really. And let's say you guys are gonna be touring this uh, product. We want to play live, yeah, but the thing is, like as everybody knows, you know, we're also busy with all kinds of other things. So what we we said also I think from the beginning, but also because Eric is is is, is in his private life also a very busy man. Um, yeah, we're gonna. I mean, if we do shows, I mean, yeah, people will have the opportunity to watch us live, but it's going to be a little bit exclusive. So you know, just we're just gonna pick out some stuff that's you know from which we know uh, it's nice to play, and uh, you know that we have a good crowd there, and then we just go for that. So I don't know, maybe we play five shows a year, maybe somewhere between five or ten, because you know it's it's really hard also to combine with every, all the other things that we are doing, but. Um, uh, yeah, well, the main thing is, I mean, that people will have the opportunity to watch his live. You know, that's for sure. Which is a good thing. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's why you do it all for, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really like a live performer. Although, I must say, with this one, um, and late, I don't know what it is, like lately, also with Death Hammer, with Asphyx, I really enjoyed uh, now just being in the studio and, you know, scream my guts out. <laughs> you know, it's just really funny to do because... Yeah, it's a cool atmosphere. There's no, there's no stress. It's just relaxed and laid back, and you know, just yeah, get it done as as, as good as you can with you know, just um, uh, you say that yeah, with just a good feeling you, you know inside, and uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a little bit of a difference between the past, but yeah, I mean, it, overall, I'm I'm still like the live performer that I've always been. You know, that's why I play metal for in the first place <laughs> to go on stage. <laughs> How are you uh, taking care of your voice, and how are you uh, finding your voice nowadays? Um, like right now, I'm sitting. For example, right now I'm sitting in a kind of a break. You know, we do. Uh, there's not that many shows, so what I, so what I do right now is just I'm not doing anything. I just let it come to rest, and by the time I, you know, uh, need my voice, then I start preparing again and slowly. You know, then you start screaming uh, with two or three songs the first day. And then you build it up until you have, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the day where you have to really, really have to work with it, like, you know, either an extensive show or recordings. But normally, um, yeah, I always prepare for things. If that's, if that's like a performance, a live one, or if that's like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, recordings in a studio, then I just, you know, want to be sure that, yeah, if, you know, when I'm, when I'm there and have to do the job, and then, then the voice is there, but it's not really a problem for me. I mean, I have it, and uh, um, I have my particular, you know, way of practicing. I can do that here at home, so I'm not depending on, on, uh, you know, on a practice room that I have to rent or that I have to check if it's free. Yes, you know, I can just all do it in my own way and relax. But yeah, it takes a discipline, of course, to to, to keep it in shape. But uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's enjoyable, especially when you have so many you know songs to choose from i mean even if, if if you do sometimes have a kind of a set and and you do have to play songs because you know that you know that's what the people want to hear then i can still sometimes uh you know play songs that i never do live for example and just hear just to make 
you know, the practice for myself, like interesting and and and, and uh, uh, yeah, different from the other times. So that's but that's just uh, that's that's really all there is. You know, I'm not doing really a lot of things. The only thing where maybe I need to do a little bit more is uh, yeah, maybe like exercise or go some jogging or something because I'm, I I now start to feel that I'm getting a little bit older. So after shows, I'm completely yeah, totally exhausted, half dead. You know, I don't know if it's yeah, I don't know if it's because of that. Maybe lack of condition. But the other hand, it could be because we do play very long and intensive. So intense, I mean, that's um, could be too. But okay, something I have to work on. <laughs> always improve. It's a heavy, heavy workload, you know, when you look at it in the evening. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's just the way I am, you know. I mean, I mean, when it comes to my voice, I am a perfectionist, and uh, you know, you never you you never want to disappoint the people. I mean, I had it since. I started again in 2007. I had it only once. It was at a show in Portugal, but I think it was because of the um, uh, yeah we did, we did too many traveling with planes. And then the problem is that you get the air conditioning. I don't know what it is in planes, but it always um, does something with my voice. You know, for example, when I I did perform a few times at the Maryland, but I never was happy with so happy with my performances there just because there was something with my voice that I couldn't define. And now I think it could be um, it could be that that stuff when you have long flights or more of several flights in a row, and then in Portugal I just completely lost it, and it was a really terrible thing. You know, okay, during the show you'll find it again, but it's not nice if you you know go on stage and you know the Portuguese because we, we never played in Portugal before, and then you know you that that all of a sudden happens, and of course the band was really worried, like you know what the hell's going on with Martin, and you know, well. Don't worry, you know, it will come back on stage. I've had it way back in the past, but uh, you know, that's just the reason why I do practice so much and why I do have the discipline to, you know, uh, yeah, to always try and give the people, you know, the best that, 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 that I have and that we have. So, but, you know, you know, these things can always happen. And certainly when you're traveling like that, it, uh, different atmospheres. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I try to. I've always tried to to. Uh, uh, like I said it. Like find find. You know what was what was uh, you know, what is the problem really? And and you know if you know what it is, then you can you can fight it or you can do something against it. But right now, I think it. I think it's planes. But uh, I'm still not sure about that. You could be right too. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm sure it affects a lot of people in that way, you know, di breathing different air, you know, and the stale air of an airplane. Yeah, that's, 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 well, to me, it, you know, it's what I say, you know, when I was in Maryland, you know, then you have a flight of like, what is it, like nine hours or something. And okay, you do land and then you do have a break in a way of, uh, yeah, you, you know, you don't have to perform the same night. But still, I mean, the voice doesn't recover that quickly. You know, you need, you need a little bit more. And yeah, you cannot acclimatize to to where you are then all of a sudden. But I don't think that really was the problem. I just think that it was a long flight, and uh, yeah, there's not really much you can do to it. Martin uh, Van Drunen, it's been a pleasure talking about uh, Grand Supreme Blood Court, and you know the, this album coming out November 19th. I think is it yeah. a worldwide release like this online? Um, I think it's uh, the 19th in America, and I think it's uh, the 12th in Europe. So uh, it's always uh, I think it's because we. Um, yeah, I mean that we are, we, you know, we do, we, we sign with a, with a European label. I think it would be the other way round, or we'll be an American band, and probably they would release it first in the States and then in Europe. But you know, makes sense. On the other hand, I think it's a bit silly why you should some release something later in the U.S. than you do in Europe. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. But okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not the marketing manager or uh, you know whatever of a record company. I'm just uh, making the product that they have to sell. Well, that's true, oh, that's true. Cell, let's put it that way. Yeah, so I look forward to it and also to the reactions. And uh, Yeah, quite curious. Well, excellent stuff, Martin. It is a good product and uh, I'll be uh, playing it. And uh, you keep thanks up the lot. great work. Cool, thanks a lot. All right, well, thank you. Uh, this is uh, our second interview. Our first one would have been in January 2012. Yeah. To promote yeah, your, your, your last work and... Uh, Look forward to talking to you again in the future, and uh, keep up the great work with w all that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, and I think it will be done probably next year, uh, uh, because, you know, we plan on bringing out, like, a new Halo Bullets album, so let's see uh, if we can make it next year. Excellent stuff. Okay. Well, we'll talk back soon. 
Okay, thanks a lot, Jason, and yeah. good luck with music, guys.